Angel Reese is on the cover. You're telling me this is sports and Angel Reese is like top of sports? Why do they do these things? What chance in hell would Angel Reese have had of being on the cover of Sports Illustrated in a world where Caitlin Clark doesn't exist? Those are a hell of a number. Those are a hell of a number. Rookie. But to me, that's not Period. dominating. But Caitlin Clark's not dominant, neither were you. We will never talk about Cheryl Swoops unless she's saying something dumb. She's just a hater. There's a disturbing trend happening in women's basketball right now, and it all centers around one name, Caitlin Clark. She's been breaking records, carrying the game on her back, yet somehow she's still being sidelined. The only time that we tend to notice her is when she has said something A about Caitlin Clark and B, it seems to be stupid. From Cheryl Swoops's bitter jabs to the WNBA snubbing Clark in their playoff promos, it's clear there's more going on here than just basketball. She continues to talk about Caitlin Clark, and she continues to be profoundly wrong in pretty much everything that comes out of her mouth. And now, Sports Illustrated puts Angel Reese on the cover of their most influential issue, as if we don't all know Reese is only riding Caitlin's wave. Angel Reese is a good player. She's a great rebounder. Numerous times, she rebounds a lot of her own misses. This isn't just oversight. It feels like an agenda. Let's dig into the hypocrisy. Before we jump into today's content, make sure to hit that like button, subscribe to our channel, and tap the bell icon so you stay updated with all our latest videos. Let's dive in. We say her stats are today, what? 20 points, uh, 8.4 assists, six rebounds. That's crazy. But five that's point, crazy. Five point, that five point those are, those are hell of a number. Those are hell of a number. Rookie. But to me, that's not Period. dominating. It, yeah, it's only not dominating because she's a rookie. Cheryl Swoops is a legend in her own right, no doubt about that. She's got three MVP titles, multiple championships, and helped define the early era of the WNBA. She said that 20 points, eight plus assists, six rebounds a game is not dominating. I assume that that means that you never dominated at all then, Cheryl Swoops. But let's be real. Her performance during her MVP years doesn't even come close to what Caitlin Clark has done in her rookie season. Nobody was talking about Cheryl Swoops before the WNBA season started, but she's figured out a way to jump back into the spotlight for the first time since retiring in 15 years. She's staying relevant by saying dumb things about the next popular women's basketball player, the most popular women's basketball player on the planet. Clark has taken the league by storm, doing things that Swoops never did even at the height of her career. Cheryl Swoops, a three-time WNBA MVP. Caitlin Clark, almost doubling her in assists in her best of those three seasons. If you look at it, you add up the points, rebounds, and assists. Caitlin Clark is having a better season overall, statistically, than any of Cheryl's three MVP years. Yet, instead of passing the torch or even acknowledging Clark's impact, Swoops seems to be going out of her way to tear her down. Caitlin Clark's not dominant, neither were you. It's more than just the occasional critical comment. It feels personal. I don't know if this is a bid to get attention or if she just, something about Caitlin Clark sticks in her craw. She continues to talk about Caitlin Clark and she continues to be profoundly wrong in pretty much everything that comes out of her mouth. Swoops' attitude reeks of jealousy, as if she can't stand that someone younger, better, and more influential is rewriting the narrative of women's basketball. We will never talk about Cheryl Swoops unless she's saying something dumb. Clark's numbers speak for themselves. She's shattering rookie records, putting up performances that echo through the sports world, yet Swoops continues to undermine her achievements. Why? You know, you never really want people to take your spotlight. The post Cheryl Swoops career has splat. She tried coaching, but she was so awful as a human being. I mean, the stories of her coaching, she got fired as an African-American woman at a Catholic school, Loyola, for being God awful to players. She didn't win, but that ain't why she was fired. She was just ridiculous, mean, nasty. Is it really so hard to give credit where it's due? Or is Swoops holding on to some outdated idea that only players from her generation deserve respect? 
those assists would be up even higher. And if she wasn't such an unselfish player, maybe her assists would be down a little bit and her points would be up. For Cheryl Swoops to say that, she's, she's just a hater. The comparison between Clark and Swoops isn't even close when it comes to influence. Clark has captured the imagination of sports fans, all sports fans, not just women's basketball. Her court vision, her three-point range, her ability to take over games in a way that even some of the NBA greats would envy. It's what makes her the face of the future. If you ask Cheryl Swoops if she was a dominant player, she would say that yes, she was a dominant player. If she's going to make any kind of argument that Caitlin Clark is not on her level, she's not going to be able to make that argument with numbers. Meanwhile, Swoops' peak influence never extended beyond the confines of the women's game. That's the harsh truth. But instead of embracing Clark as the game changer she is, Swoops has chosen to downplay her achievements. And that's what a lot of these women are doing is they feel like what we have done for this game, this young player has come into our game and she's getting way more respect and all that stuff than we are. It's clear that this goes beyond performance. This is about someone unwilling to accept that their time in the spotlight has passed. It's sad to see someone as iconic as Swoops take this route, but it also reveals a deeper issue in the WNBA, a resistance to change, to letting new stars shine. I think she is the Stephen Curry of women's college basketball. I think she has changed the dynamics of the way the game is played. I think the way she plays, the pizzazz, is like she's probably the most prolific scorer the game of basketball has ever seen. Now, the WNBA itself seems to be perpetuating this jealousy and resistance. Take the recent playoffs promo as a prime example. The league put together a flashy trailer to showcase their stars, and who did they leave out? Caitlin Clark. This is a tweet from the WNBA's official X account. What I the mean, fuck it, are they doing? Why do they, they do these things? Because if they would have put Caitlin Clark's picture on there, we wouldn't be talking about this. The very player who has been single-handedly driving attention to women's basketball like no one else in years. It's mind-boggling, almost comical. Caitlin Clark has been the best thing, the most dominant thing to happen to the WNBA ever. Remember, there's been good players come out of college, but nobody really cared. We'd seen it. Nobody really, really cared. They filled the promo with established stars, sure. Players like Aja Wilson and Brianna Stewart, who are undoubtedly great in their own right. But how do you omit the biggest rising star, the one who's been a cultural phenomenon since day one? There is no race. And guess what? Those aren't fans. The people that are doing that, if they're doing that, they're just idiots. And if you're going to be popular, if you're going to be in the public eye, you're going to have a lot of idiots. The absence of Clark in that promo doesn't feel like a simple oversight. It feels intentional, almost like the WNBA is trying to downplay her influence or somehow keep the spotlight on its established stars. But here's the truth they seem to be missing. The reason Caitlin Clark is so captivating isn't just her insane stats or her ability to drop 30-foot bombs like their free throws. It's the energy, the swagger, and the way she brings a new generation of fans to the game. It's the electric atmosphere she creates every time she steps on the court. Her fans are little girls wearing 22. Her fans are moms and dads taking little girls and little boys to see something they've never seen. People tune in to see what Caitlin Clark is going to do next, and the WNBA knows it. But for some reason, they're choosing not to capitalize on it. You're telling me this is sports and Angel Reese is like top of sports? Like she's the face of influential sports? I mean, that literally renders that issue in that publication stupid and useless. Sorry. It's as if the league is clinging to its past stars, those who have been the faces of the WNBA for years, instead of embracing the fact that a new era is upon us. White girl is successful. White girl more popular. White girl must be bad bad white girl we see it in politics with bad orange man and of course your fans are racist you racist caitlin clark is more than a player she's a movement her games are must watch tv not just for die hard women's basketball fans but for casual viewers sports enthusiasts and even people who've never cared about the wmba before 
There isn't one single interesting woman playing in the WNBA to me. A mid-range jump shooting Asia Wilson and how great she is. She's not great. She's okay. I mean, she probably could start on a few boys' teams out here in the country, but none here in Indiana City. Uh, but Kayla Clark's interesting. And yet, the league's decision makers seem blind to this fact. They're stuck in this mindset where only the veteran stars should get the attention, as if acknowledging Clark's impact would somehow undermine what they've built. But that's where they're wrong. We understand that the world that we live in can easily be defined by white racist, white bad. You're rooting for a white guy, bad. You're wearing a Make America Great Again hat. Think about that. Make America Great Again. Oh, you don't understand. That has racial connotations. No, it doesn't. When it's not going well for you, claim racism. When it's going well for you, claim victim slash racism. We get it. We understand, and frankly, I just laugh at it. Clark isn't here to steal the spotlight. She's here to expand it. The more people watch her, the more people get interested in the league as a whole. And yet, by sidelining her in major promotions, the WNBA is shooting itself in the foot. It's almost like they're afraid of her rapid rise, worried that her influence could overshadow the players who have been carrying the league for years. But here's the thing. They should be celebrating her, not excluding her. Caitlin Clark is the only player in the history of the WNBA to achieve those numbers or better. She dominates. She dominates the ball, dominates the other team's thought, dominates her own team's thought, dominates the crowd, dominates the entire area of the arena. The WNBA needs new stars to keep growing, and Clark is the perfect face for that growth. She brings eyes to the game, that wouldn't have been there otherwise. Still, the league continues to promote others, perhaps out of fear that their long-standing stars will be outshined. Caitlin Clark is becoming the best player in the entire WNBA, not because she's white, because she's that good. She's having Larry Bird impact. She's been the driving force of the hottest team in the entire league, despite her record turnovers. Why? Because she's that good. She's legit good. She's colorblind good. She's guilt-free good. She's apolitically good. It's hard not to see a pattern here. The league talks a big game about growing women's basketball, about pushing the sport to new heights, but when it comes to actually embracing the next big thing, they hesitate. They pull back. They focus on maintaining the status quo rather than letting new, undeniable talent take the wheel. And let's be honest, Caitlin Clark is the biggest needle mover the league has had in years. You can't say that about many players, even some of the best, because Clark brings something that transcends the typical star power. She's got crossover appeal in a way few athletes, male or female, ever do. She's not just a player who excels within her sport, She's a cultural figure in the making, and for the WNBA to leave her out of the playoff promo is nothing short of hypocritical. I, I don't think the WNBA is ready for this type of attention that, that she's bringing. Racism. Everybody's talking about enough with the racist BS. She's nasty. She knows how to ball. Everybody else is jealous. They're pissed off because you're getting this like, it, 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 it's, it's ridiculous. And we're never going to advance as a species, and we're never, if he keeps having that type of attitude. It, it, it's ridiculous. It's like, what? Everything has to go back to race. Everything has to keep going back to race. She's really good. Let it be that. And the other players should shut the hell up. Like, she, nobody was talking about your league. Nobody cared about the WNBA until that girl. That girl, Caitlin Clark, I don't care what color she is. She's ridiculous. She's nasty. And now people are watching. And you guys are talking shit about her. She should leave. She should have got those other contracts. Pat. Where, where, where does she have a contract to go somewhere the else? The big three. She should have gone to the big three. To hell with the WNBA. They're nothing. They're nobody. The league is quick to promote inclusivity and equality, but when it comes to elevating the player who is doing the most to expand their audience and bring in new fans, they're strangely quiet. Maybe it's because Clark doesn't fit their narrative of who the face of the league should be right now. Maybe it's because her rise has been so rapid and meteoric that they don't quite know how to handle it. Whatever the reason, it's a massive oversight that reveals an underlying issue within the WNBA.
a reluctance to fully embrace the star power that could take the league to the next level. Tell me when the last time all these players been in the league all this time, yes. you name all the prominent players, tell me the time the WNBA has had this much buzz. I'll wait. Everybody in the chat that y'all was saying, oh, these women been in the league before Caitlin Clark. Tell me the time they had this much buzz. Tell me the time they had this many eyes on the draft. Tell me this many times they had watching WNBA preseason games. I'm just waiting. Go ahead, feel like. Go ahead, chat. Take off. That's just like saying, oh, the NBA, they were great players before Larry Bird and Magic Johnson. He didn't get this buzz when they got there, did it? This isn't just about Caitlin Clark being left out of a trailer. It's about the WNBA failing to recognize that the future is already here, and her name is Caitlin Clark. The more they push her to the sidelines, the more they expose their own hypocrisy. They say they want to grow the game, but when they have the perfect opportunity to do so, they're too stuck in their ways to act on it. The game that the Las Vegas Aces played right. against uh -huh. uh, uh, with Caitlin Clark, right. the tickets were triple. And then, as if the WNBA's exclusion of Caitlin Clark wasn't baffling enough, Sports Illustrated doubled down on this strange trend of ignoring the obvious. Sports Illustrated with their 50 most influential in sports, and they've got on the cover, of course, the woman who came into the WNBA and completely changed the game. Of course, I'm speaking of Angel Reese is on the cover. When they recently released their list of the 50 most influential people in sports, they put Angel Reese on the cover. Now, don't get me wrong. Angel Reese is a solid player. She's talented, confident, and knows how to play to the crowd. But let's be real for a moment. Is she the one who has completely transformed the way people view women's basketball? Absolutely not. Asia Wilson is the MVP of the WNBA. Scored a thousand points this season, the first woman in WNBA history to have a thousand point regular season. Maybe give her the cover. If you're gonna pivot and you're not gonna go with Caitlin Clark, maybe give the best player in the women's game the cover. Reese's fame, while significant, is largely intertwined with Caitlin Clark. Reese is constantly in the headlines, not because of what she's doing on the court, but because of the drama she stirs up off it, specifically her public rivalry with Clark. Let's face it, like it or not, Angel Reese is riding Caitlin Clark's coattails. But Angel Reese should be thanking her lucky stars that Caitlin Clark came along because she's making Angel Reese a lot of money and she's getting Angel Reese attention, such as being on the cover of Sports Illustrated. Every time Reese tries to steal the spotlight, it's by invoking Caitlin Clark's name, either directly or indirectly. It's like she needs Clark to stay relevant and Sports Illustrated fell for it by putting her on the cover instead of Clark, the true face of women's basketball right now. What chance in hell would Angel Reese have had of being on the cover of Sports Illustrated in a world where Caitlin Clark doesn't exist? Here's the thing. Angel Reese is popular, but Caitlin Clark is influential. There's a big difference between the two. Reese gained notoriety after her infamous you can't see me gesture directed at Clark during the NCAA tournament. But that moment became viral because of who it was aimed at, Caitlin Clark, not Reese herself. People weren't talking about Reese's performance in that game as much as they were talking about how she went head to head with Clark. It's almost as if Reese's relevance hinges on her being the foil to Caitlin Clark, the villain in a storyline where Clark is the hero. You're telling me this is sports and Angel Reese is like top of sports? Like she's the face of influential sports? I mean, that literally renders that issue in that publication stupid and useless, sorry. Meanwhile, Clark has been quietly revolutionizing the sport with her play. She's putting up numbers that are unheard of for a rookie. She's breaking records, drawing in viewers, and making women's basketball a mainstream conversation. And yet, Sports Illustrated opts to focus on Reese as if she's the one who's leading this new era. Angel Reese's team sucks. Angel Reese can't make a basket. Even African-Americans are starting to make videos of their friends missing layups, throwing the ball over the backboard from two feet. Let's not forget that the very reason Reese is in the conversation at all is because of her connection to Clark. Without that rivalry, Reese is just another good player in the league. With Clark, 
she becomes part of a narrative that is much bigger than herself. It's this kind of misstep that shows how out of touch some media outlets can be. I went to a fever game and I saw a bunch of little kids wearing 22 jerseys. And if this idiot thinks it's because I'm wearing this jersey because I don't like Angel Reese. I think if you ask most of them, they'd say, who's Angel Reese? It's no, there's no problem. I mean, it bothers African-American people to their core that a white girl and a white man, Jokic in the NBA, is playing basketball. There's no racial uh, sovereignty. There's no racial uh, exception that, hey, black people are supposed to be better than white people at basketball. That's crap. Sports Illustrated, much like the WNBA, missed the point. They could have used this opportunity to highlight the player who is truly pushing the game forward, the one who's captivating audiences and setting new standards for excellence. But instead, they chose to put Angel Reese front and center, perhaps because they think she embodies the flashier, more marketable side of the game. But here's the truth. The real story, the one that actually matters, is Caitlin Clark. Dr. Martin Luther King said, judge people by the content of their character, not the color of their skin. And I got to tell you, the content of Caitlin Clark's character has never been questioned. Content of Angel Reese's. Oof, not even sure she has character. Clark isn't just dominating on the court. She's dominating the conversation. When people talk about women's basketball, they're talking about her, whether the media wants to admit it or not. Her influence goes beyond the typical star power. She's someone who gets people invested in the sport who weren't watching before. And yet, in a strange twist of logic, she's relegated to being just another name on the list, while Reese graces the cover. Here's a TikTok in Angel Reese's comments below. Oh my God, what are we going to do? Let me say it again. You were never a Caitlyn fan. You were an Angel Reese hater. You didn't care about Caitlyn Clark's skills. Mm -mm. You left no crumbs. Okay, that's Angel Reese's response. That means that you're right. I agree. You told the truth. It's as if everyone is afraid to admit what's right in front of them. Caitlin Clark is the reason why women's basketball is on the map right now, not Angel Reese. Sports Illustrated may have thought they were being provocative by choosing Reese, but in reality, they missed the mark. The real influence, the real power, lies with Clark, and the sooner they acknowledge that, the better. No woman that I've seen has ever been able to jump shoot, wrist flick, logo threes, Steph like threes, like Caitlin Clark can. By continuing to elevate players like Reese who are riding the coattails of Clark's success, the media and the WNBA are only delaying the inevitable. Caitlin Clark is the future of the sport and everyone knows it. The biggest reason that she's popular is, it's the Steph Curry syndrome. She looks a lot like the girl who's out shooting hoops next door, and she plays like we would. We are all capable of playing. So here we are at the heart of the issue. The truth is, Caitlin Clark's impact on women's basketball is undeniable. She's the game changer, the needle mover, the one player who's transforming how the world sees the sport. Yet we're watching as she's repeatedly sidelined, whether it's by the WNBA, Sports Illustrated, or the media narratives driven by figures like Angel Reese. It's frustrating, but it's also telling. The fact that Clark continues to be overlooked despite her accomplishments just proves how deep the jealousy and politics run in women's sports. But let's be clear, no matter how hard they try to push others to the forefront, Clark's influence cannot be ignored for long. The fans see it, the players know it, and soon enough, the entire sports world will have no choice but to recognize it. Caitlin Clark isn't just a player in the game. She is the game. And no amount of marketing hype, biased promo trailers, or misguided cover choices can change that. The future of women's basketball belongs to Caitlin Clark, and whether they like it or not, everyone will have to accept that sooner or later.